You know, I grew up in a South Indian family, Mangalorean. Uh, my mother, uh, she's Mangalorean. My stepfather, Mangalorean. Uh, all other relatives, Mangalorean. And we were predominantly Catholic. Okay. And uh, given the fact that my mother came from Mangalore, the village, we're talking of in you know, the 70s. Um, and then she straight away went to Dubai. So they were not like uh, well versed into good parenting techniques or skills. In fact, I, <laughs> I personally feel they should never have been parents. So they raised me in a very traditional sense, if you, for lack of a better word, where, uh, you know, they would beat you. If you did something wrong, they'd beat you with a stick or slipper or, you know, slap you or hit you or pinch you or twist your ear. That is how my parents and my generation was disciplined. And then it all depended on who the parent was. The punishment would be more extreme. In some cases, they would beat you with a rubber cane, with a wire, with, the, you know, the hanger, no? the metal hanger. So different parents had different techniques of disciplining. Like in the olden American days, they would spank you on your ass. Like uh, I used to see these American movies where they're sitting around, around a table and having their dinner. And if, uh, how are you? <laughs> so they would uh, have dinner. And if one of the small boys, or you know, boys mostly, would say something wrong, the father said, come with me, you take him out, spank him on his ass <laughs> and bring him back. So that was a different forms of discipline. My days. Today it is go to your room, you know, which I don't know what is discipline. So uh, I was born and raised in that environment where that was how you used to discipline someone. But rarely if ever, my parents used to my parents would uh, compliment me. In fact, uh, if you ask me, uh, what were some of the good things your parents have said about you? I'm, I'm not uh, saying this just for the sake of the video. I can't remember a single thing they said good about me in front of me. They never said, you're special or you're talented or you're smart. The only context where my parents would use a compliment was to piggyback on a point where I was a failure. For example, let's say I wouldn't get good marks in the exam. My parents say, say you're so smart, but you're wasting your time. If only you focused on yourself, if only you this thing, you'd have been so smart, but see what you're doing, wasting your talent. Say so it was never a compliment or encouragement or anything of that sort. And um, if I look for the silver lining, I would say that I'm glad they didn't because that made me very thick skinned. That made me grow up in a world of criticism and hatred and bad words and people bullying me and putting me down, which anyway today happens on social media. And that is why when people abuse me, abuse my mother, father, daughter, wife, make fun of me, whatever. <laughs> Even the worst, most horrific uh, statements just goes, okay. Only thing is I don't give them the platform to continue spamming my feed with their nonsense and insecurities. Okay. So, uh, the, the day I remembered a compliment, there's one special day which I will never forget. One special day. And uh, it was a day my father's cousin, his name is Harry, Harry Miranda. Uh, he had come home. Very rarely people used to come home. Very rarely we used to go to anyone's home. So he, I think he was working for a good company in a good position. So he had come home and uh, he was visiting us. And as usual, I was talking a lot. I was super excited. I was a hyper kid, you know, I had ADHD. 
So he had come there with his wife, Sylvia, I think. Yeah, his daughter and son. So as we were talking, and uh, I think my my mother and father kind of apologized to him for my behavior because I was hyper talkative. I was hyper crazy. My mother and father would find it a matter of shame or embarrassment on how I would naturally behave because I was naturally very expensive, like expressive, like my daughter is today. That is why. I only tell my daughter, don't interrupt when adults are talking. Otherwise, you know, I allow her to express herself. She must. I'm not going to do the same mistake my parents did. So, uh, my parents kind of apologize to me. I'm sorry, he's, he, you know, he talks like a lady. He's, you know, in our culture, if you tell a man or a guy, he talks like a lady. Like he's gossipy, like a lady. It's it's taken as a very big insult. So he they were telling him, hey, he talks like a lady. He talks too much. He's doesn't know when to shut up. And so they were putting me down in front of everyone, which I was used to. So I was like not bothered. I think I was ten, eleven, or whatever years old. And I was constantly ah uh, uh, I remember I was constantly asking him questions. I don't know why because I lacked a role model, a father figure. And given the fact that he was paying attention to me, I took a liking to him, and I started asking him. I don't know what questions I was asking about life, success. I don't know what, but something in those lines. And to which he said something that I never heard anyone say before. He said, "No, the this boy is very special." You know, when he said that, it's like. You know, when time stands still, they say, "No, time stood still and couldn't hear anyone, anything." And it registered in my head that he said, "This boy is special." Hmm. And subsequently, he, when he came the next time, he gave me the first book. My first non-fiction book was uh, "Think and Grow Rich with Peace of Mind," Napoleon Hill. It was his book. He gave me that book. I don't know if. I ever returned it? I don't know if I still have it. I don't know. But I made sure that started my journey of wanting to read non-fiction books because the positivity, the message of you're special, you can achieve anything in the world. And I was like, wow, maybe I can achieve. And if you have read Napoleon Hill's books, he says the seed of greatness. You'll achieve your destiny. You're born to achieve greatness. There is something in you. So he keeps preaching all these. Super hyper motivating words, and remember, this was the 80s. 80s motivational gurus were a big thing. Motivational, inspirational gurus. If you want the best, listen to Les Brown, L E S B R O W N, Jim Rohn, Earl Nightingale. Oh, classics, man! From the 80s, huh? They're from the sorry 60s. Timeless words of wisdom, even to this day. If you want the best of Les Brown, listen to Les Brown. Hungry, H U N G R Y. Oof, the passion and fervor by which he would speak it would just make you stand up and take action. Very powerful stuff. Okay, I'm going far ahead. That time there was no internet, there was no TV. This all I found out later through tapes and all that. Okay, so he had given me this book and he said I was special. I was like, wow. And uh, close to this, there was another gentleman who told me I was special. What happened was my uh, school friends. Okay, those days we had many school friends. You know, you go to school. When you come back, the bus, the school bus drops you, and then they drop you at a common spot, and then you have to walk to your house. So there was this particular spot I would get get down, even though it was far away from my house. But the reason I'd get down there is because my friends used to get down there, and we used to walk together. So this guy's name was Novel. Noval Anto Paul. We used to get down near his house because they used to play cricket and some games. They used to play in the sand. Those days, that is how we used to kill time. Not social media, not the smartphone. Having a break or taking a break was playing outside in the sand and mud and cycling and uh, cricket and football and okay. So as we got down there, we were all playing. And uh, you know, I would take some time to play before going home. And it so happened that uh, 
as we were playing and uh, doing mischief there was this uh, noel and to paul's father okay you see my beard na exactly the same he had but a well kept beard okay look like a professor i want you to visualize a professor with a beard thin guy very thin maybe so short okay may yeah, i am saying my height <laughs> okay so he's so tall whatever so short so tall so this thin guy as we were playing and this and that i don't know he called his son and and then everyone were shouting screaming and and then i don't know for what uh, i can't recollect maybe he was giving chocolates or something even i went running to him and hello uncle or something like that i said and then a couple of guys at the back started screaming hey sir he, uncle is a idiot or something they said some name calling stuff they said you know i was small huh? i was looking up at him he was so tall and you know when people are calling me names are oh, stupid is this is that i looked up smiling yeah, i'm used to being insulted he looked down and i'll tell you he actually did this huh he looked down he just patted me on my head and he said no he is not stupid he is not whatever he is special he told them huh? he is special and he looked down at me with his big eyes and spectacle this thing and said you are a special boy you know i'll i'll tell you i didn't know what it meant and i don't know like i'm not say, listen i'm i'm not a small boy uh, and i'm not going to start subscribing oh i'm special no but at that time for me at that age given the fact that i only was abused and verbally insulted and made to feel like shit to be told you're special actually made me believe yeah i'm special man and then you know coupled with this incident of my father's cousin my stepfather's cousin isn't deserve to be called my father so coupled with that when uh, i was told again you're special and then when i read the book oh you're special i really started to believe that i'm special man although i didn't know what was special and i kept believing oh i'm special i believed seriously from that point on I believed I was special. I believed um I was destined to do something big. I believed I I was about to achieve something big. I didn't know what it was. Okay. Whether it was being a multi that time I didn't know the word millionaire. Rich. Rich was a simpler word. Today we have multi millionaire and billionaire. But those days rich. I thought i was special maybe i would be a film star maybe i would be famous maybe i'd be a big businessman maybe you know my world view was very limited because no internet no so only at home even tv was not allowed i thought i'll be a film star or i'll be rich but i always believed i'll be special and i went through life believing that i'll be special I got into public speaking as to talk a lot got into DJing all because I believed I was special crowds used to get entertained by me I thought oh this is because I'm special then um I started having girlfriends because I thought I was special as to see Arnold's books flex and muscle and fitness those were the magazines uh you had to spend around $15 it was expensive in Dubai so as to go to the outlet and sit and read there itself spinnies was a supermarket for all the white folks so i used to go there and they had these magazines see the muscles and oh wow because we didn't have no any other place to get this so i said oh if i do push ups and i would see arnold's movies and sylvester stallone's and van dam and see them having muscles and i would think oh they got muscles by push ups i would do push ups and muscles <laughs> well i thought they were growing at that time i should always check like this as to see if anything was growing 
and uh, yeah, I would see blood sport. You know, Van Damme hitting on the wall and his blood coming from knuckles and he's becoming strong. I has to do that. Seriously, until blood used to come out. I used to hit my knuckles on the wall. What more can you expect out of a 16-year-old testosterone-filled young man who believes he's special? So I tried everything. And uh, I think the quest to be special, to stand out, led me to do all these tattoos and take up led me to do all these tattoos and take up steroids for bodybuilding because I was awfully strong and girls to have validation that I am indeed attractive go out to expensive places, try to buy expensive brands because that would validate the truth that I was special this continued until <laughs> it went to my head that I was special. <laughs> I thought I was God's gift to mankind. You know, when self-confidence becomes overconfidence and then becomes arrogance. And coupled with ignorance, then you feel you're invincible. And like they say, pride has a fall, no? That uh, thing, Greek, Greek mythological, this thing uh, where this guy glued feathers to, you know, made a wax with feathers and him and his father flew out of the prison and his father said, don't fly too close to the sun. But the sun didn't listen and saw the sun so beautiful and he flew higher and higher and finally the it became so hot that the sun melted the wax and the man fell to his death. So, uh, with all the you can see houses being built step by step. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to build it so high. Anyway, money, money. Okay, so yeah, so I flew too close to the sun only to fall, and I did fall. And it's only when you fall and you get hurt, and the higher you go, the harder the fall. And then you learn your lessons in life. So whether it was relationship breakups or uh, failure in trying to run a business or get a job or maintain a job or have money and even though your ego and your defensiveness still doesn't want to admit that you're wrong. So you go on. Hey doggy. Hmm. So yes, yes, yes. Come. Can I come? Want to be on camera? And they just bark. They don't do anything. But if anyone else were to run, they'll chase you. Okay, anyway. So, you know, you can keep being defensive and stubborn and say, no, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to rise to the top. But one day, you know, the failure after failure after failure after failure, you get hammered so much, your spirit cannot take it anymore. Your heart cannot take it anymore. And then as age comes along, you're like, man, how long can I keep uh, being like this? You know, when you're young, you, you think you'll fight the world. You'll debate with... I used to actually take every opportunity to fight and debate with others. When you get older, no, you just get tired, yeah. Seriously, I has to go to religious groups, even though I didn't know their religion, and debate with six, seven guys at a time. Ah, today, today I don't have that energy. Or I rather don't want to. So finally, after being hammered left, right and center by life, finally realized, hmm, I don't know about this special. I don't know if I'm special. I've been trying so hard with these tattoos and this body and memorizing books and trying to share the knowledge and trying to show off how much I know in books and trying to talk smart, trying to get girls and... I'm not special. And that is where uh, I stopped trying to be special 
and I started to focus on what matters, genuinely what matters and what matters. If a very simple principle, you create value for others and if people perceive value in what you do, they will come to you, pay you money and that's how you make, uh, you pay for your daily expenses or your daily bread or you earn your daily bread. So it's like, okay. And then obviously as I started sharpening my skills and honing my skills and learning from mentors and taking a student attitude and changing my behavior and I guess attitude towards others and being focused, no? making the right choices. Obviously the same value, I was able to add a premium, I was able to add my creativity, my thought process and charge a little more, a little more, a little more and I kept getting good. And that's where I'm here today. Okay. So now, the question is, am I special? I'm not special. I'm normal like everyone else. Like, I know, you look at my tattoos, no man, you're not normal. Just, just let me complete and you'll understand. Normal in the sense, I'm a human being like you. Two hands, two legs, brain, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, okay. The only difference is maybe our religious beliefs, our cultural beliefs, our backgrounds, our experiences, our expertise. So these are the elements that make us different, okay? Otherwise, we are more or less the same. And if you look at our activities, I'm working hard to make ends meet. You're working hard to make ends meet. Okay, so that's all that's same. The areas where we differ is, the personal choices we make, like the tattoos that I have, or I'm a YouTuber, you might be something else. I'm a coach, you might be an engineer. Okay. So now the question comes down to you. Are you special? Or does that mean nobody is special? See, the reality is, if you check specific genres, there are people who are good at a particular thing. And they have given years and years to that craft and they have attained greatness because the world, you know, admired or there was a demand for that skill. You can say Usain Bolt, you could say like an Elon Musk, you could say like Jeff Bezos, you can say like uh, even uh, MMA, you can Google search this guy, his name is Demetrius Johnson, short guy, he's a fighter among the light, the thinnest smallest category. The funny thing about him is he fought the toughest fighters in the world while training only twice a week. Imagine these fighters train, um, like they literally train every day, twice or thrice, every day, huh? twice a day. He used to train twice a week, just a little bit. He never took his training seriously. And he won, he is known as the champion with the highest number of wins in the world, in the history of MMA. Okay, he's also a gamer, simple guy. And then there's another fighter, his name is John Jones. He's a heavier guy. This guy learned fighting by watching YouTube videos. Can you believe that? Seriously, he taught himself fighting by watching YouTube videos. So there are rare individuals like these, like even Conor McGregor in fighting. In boxing, you have Muhammad Ali, you have uh, Floyd Mayweather, you have Sugar Ray Leonard, you, you know, the name's gone. I'm sure in cricket also you have Sachin Tendulkar, Kapil Dev. In football, you have Lionel Messi, you have Ronaldo, uh, you have, uh, what's his name, Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah, same name. So, in chess, Gary Kasparo and, you know, whatever the other guy's name is, Anand or whatever. So, yeah. That way, there are some skills which some people possess, which nobody else, like an Einstein. But then, uh, for the rest of us, or most of us, we are not them. The 99.999, and you can go nine nines after the nine, because we're talking of billions, right? For the majority of us, we are just ordinary people. 
we are trying to be extraordinary we are trying to be special like for example me why did i tattoo my face why did i tattoo all this because i want to show hey i'm special i'm different look at me why did i have those big muscles oh i'm not weak like others look i'm big and strong so we all do things like that why do you think girls get uh, uh, you know surgery make their breasts bigger ass bigger or their perfect shape or have surgeries on their cheek chin nose mouth hair why do they have all these surgeries it's simple it's because they want to show i'm special i'm beautiful look at me i stand out and what is the end result want to make money want to enjoy life want to have the best things life has to offer i see i don't know i'll not tell you who it is but there is one particular female who walks from here uh i don't know if she has appeared on my videos when she walks i'll tell you the thing about her she wears the skimpiest outfit skimpiest huh in above her waist where she is literally showing her and she'll do it like she will literally walk this route go all the way outside even walk there and even at night where it's supposed to be dangerous she'll do it why is she literally showing her breast like everything only the nipples are covered why she does she do that is there any need you'll say it's her body let it oh, fine it's like me walking after him but the purpose of me walking this way is for sun is for exercise is for the body to sweat because i sit all day you know in an ac aircon room which is not good so i need to exercise i need to get a little bit of vitamin d for my health you'll not see me walk like this when i go outside shopping or in the night or uh, apart from this route that you see me on i never never show my tattoo there are a lot of people who are fully tattooed like me huh? head face everything when they ride their bike they'll wear just shorts like some even wear just the under like it's like a speedo or like a looks like an underwear and a full body tattooed and they literally go shopping and driving there i know you'll say don't be jealous anything i say you'll say something else <laughs> my critics only not you so for me it's a reason okay i'm not doing it for hey look at my tattoos just bored of it i'm going to be 50 man come on but this girl is young she is i think 18 19 20 i understand why she is doing what she is doing because i was that age i wanted to show my physique my figure my looks and that's my way or her way or most of our youngsters we are showing that we are special we stand out but as you grow older no you will come to realize all this is a gimmick and it's not limited to only uh, showing your body or taking photographs of you and posting it online even people who argue and debate in whatsapp groups even the people who uh, hide behind real names and comment behind you know my videos or other people's videos or argue with others or troll others that's their way of showing i'm special in fact uh, there was a documentary uh, on youtube this guy used to troll everyone on their physique and figure and all that and one day he is narrating the story one day somebody had told him i i can openly challenge you you'll never show your physique okay you're making fun of mine take it from me i give you a open challenge you're living in some dark basement and disfigured and you have some physical issues and you're compensating that by making fun you know what that guy said hit him so badly because what he said was true he was in a dark basement he had a medical health issue where uh, his body was he was massively overweight his legs he could not walk he could not if he sat on the sofa he could not get up without help 
and he decided uh, it was time to change his life. So, we tend to show we are special by many ways. Sometimes even by expensive things to compensate. But, you know, like my journey has been, eventually you realize, man, whom am I fooling here? Whom am I fooling? I'm fooling no one but myself. You think you're fooling others. You're just fooling yourself. Females who are not married. Oh, I don't need a man. Oh, I... Hmm, I'm not like this. I'm not. One day when you become old and you're alone, you're like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? And that is where you'll ask thought-provoking questions. You'll ask questions that hit you and you'll do it quietly. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, father time is such that it brings you back to reality. Today, I'm not uh, thinking of being special or all that. In fact, uh, I get parents who tell me, Oh, my law, you should talk to my son, you should talk to my daughter. She's so special, he is so special. I've told you, know, in my previous videos, where parents, some parents even, uh, like, are just the extreme opposite. Where they literally forget convincing others, they convince themselves that my child is special. Loy, my, my child is so smart. Loy, my kid can advise you. I've had very close friends tell me that they are 16, 17 year old, can advise me, can teach me. <laughs> Let that sink in. And uh, trust me, when I would ask them, I know what to ask. Forget punctured, many of them ended up crying. They would tell him, oh, my daughter is enterprising and this and that. I would say, okay, let me see her real-world skills. I would ask her a simple question. The father said, no, my daughter is tough and mentally smart, real-world skills. I said, say a man, a stranger sitting next to you, and he touches your leg. And I actually, with the permission of the father who is watching, I touch her leg and I say, the guy touches you like this, what will you do? And I'll tell you, the girl is like blank. She's like, so I tell the father, real world skills, and the father keeps quiet. Because these are real world skills, huh? to survive in the real world. It's not going to be hunky-dory. So if I could leave you with a message, it would be whether your parents are in, you know, discouraging like mine, or whether your parents are just the opposite encouraging you and praising you. It shouldn't matter. I'll tell you, there are... Today, more than anything else, I get so many of these youngsters who literally try to school me and tell me, eh, yeah, you're a piece of shit, you're this, you're that, or my parents, and they'll talk about their parents. And, and some of their parents really pamper their egos. So... They truly believe that they are meant to achieve greatness. <laughs> I've had clients who paid me a session, my daughter is going to be the CEO of this, or my son is going to, oh, he's amazing, Loy. Oh, I'm telling you, he's, he has, he can even become bigger than Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let him be a Musk first. Then let's see about the Elon. Hmm. So whatever your parents say, just ignore. They can say you're special, they can say you're a mistake, they can say you're a piece of shit, they can say you're a good for nothing, whatever they say. Let the world say whatever it wants, let people say whatever they want. You can also say whatever you like. You can believe whatever you want. But the reality is, Yes, you do need self-belief, yes. That is, that doesn't disappear. But, you need to work at it. You need to work on a skill, you need to work on your talent. 
and you need to provide value to others whether it's in the form of entertainment or a service or a skill and then when you start putting your creativity your expertise your experience and you know put your signature it's like your signature series it's like a chef who learned how to cook but then after years of experimentation and trying different things and putting his own spin on things created his own unique flavor of something then the world will come knocking at your door yes there will be copycats yes people will try to copy you but as long as you keep going growing your craft and keep getting better nobody will touch you and then you leave your indelible mark that you are definitely one of a kind and then maybe only then you can say you're special anyway this is what i wanted to share with you let me know your thoughts if you agree disagree with what i have to say i'd love to hear your comments all right chal mein you guys take care bye